Hi everyone, it's Ryan with SacramentoAppraisalVlog.com and today let's talk about how to graph data from MLS, okay? Now imagine you're listing a property in Land Park and then the seller is adamant about listing it way higher than you think it should be listed at. Well, this is one way to very quickly show the market visually, okay? In the past I've shown how to use numeric, but today I want to show you how to use Excel because some people have been uh, tripped up by numeric or they think I don't really like numeric. I have Excel on my computer already. So uh, let me let me show you what I did. Okay, so imagine Land Park, your client wants to list at $500,000, a two bedroom, one bath house that's around 1,000 square feet. So I've drawn a map around Land Park and Upper Land Park and I scroll down. I'm going to show all sales over the past five years because I think this is just going to give a great context. Okay, all two bedroom, one bath properties between 900 and 1200 square feet. Okay, so I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click export because I'm going to export the data to Excel. And I'm going to click here, go to Realty Tools without photos, go to submit. And I'm going to click on this file. I could also save it, but I'm just going to open it for now. Definitely save your work, okay? <laughs> you, you don't want to do something and lose it. So um, click the file. Now, really, there's a lot of information here, but the only thing I'm interested in is sales date and sales price. Why? Because those are the things I'm going to graph. So in order to make the graph work, I'm going to um, left click on the sold price column at the very top. I'm going to right click on this and go to cut. Then I'm going to right click on this blank column and go to paste because I want the sales price to be to the right of the sales date. Okay, now the only thing I have to do if I'm going to graph this information, I'm going to uh, hold down my left click button and then scroll over both columns. Okay, so both are highlighted and piece of cake. All I need to do is go to insert. And then there's a lot of different graphs I can I can use, but what I want to do is show a scatter graph because this graph will show every single data point. Okay, so here's our graph of all these sales. Okay, this was done very very quickly. Now here's the deal: the graph doesn't look very good right now, so basically everything from this point on is stylizing to make it look good, and we can do this very quickly. So we'll go a uh, title all sales in Land Park. Two bed, one bath, and 900 to 1200 square feet. Okay, so that way it's really clear. Okay, let's add a title also. And so we'll go up here to insert, and then, oops, excuse me, um, we'll go to layout, and then go to access titles and primary vertical title. Okay, that's a rotated title, and we'll make the title say reported price in MLS. Okay, the font's a little small, so let me change it. I'll go to 14, and then I'll go up here again uh, to layout, and then we'll go to access titles, and then primary horizontal access title, title below the access. Okay, and so then we'll put um, October, October 2008 to September 2014. Okay, and I'm going to uh, click enter because I want to do one more thing. I want to add my website address at the bottom. I want to do that because I want people to know that this is my graph. Um, I created it um, just in case it shows up somewhere else online. Okay, it's always good to, to give credit. Okay, so um, let's mess with the graph a little bit. I'm going to left click here. I'm going to pull this out a little bit so that way it extends further. I'm going to take the sales price and I'm going to just, just put it over here. Okay, um, let's mess with the axis a little bit. There's a little too much space here, way too much there. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna uh, double click there um, and minimum space. Uh, let's add a little bit of time there. And so uh, see what about 150 does. Um, and let's take away some time here. There's about 500 days too much. And so let me see, yeah, that starts to work a little bit more. You can see it took down some of the days. Um, and look, it looks like it has about 500 days between each um, point here on the x-axis. And we want to go 365 because we want to have those points uh, once a year. Okay. Now let me do this. I'm going to right click on the uh, date down here and I'm going to go to add major grid lines. Okay. That gives me some grid lines up here. And I'm also going to put add minor grid lines so that I have um, some other grid lines. Now uh, let's style this a little bit. I'm going to click the main portion here and go format plot area. 
Um, and let's see, I'm going to put a solid fill color in there. See, I could pick any color I want, but here's the one that gave me. It's a little bit blue, and I changed the transparency so it's lighter. Um, but, you know, oh, I need to do one more thing. Format plot area, I want a border um, there. That, that'll look much better. Um, I left click on the legend, and then I'm going to go to format legend, fill. I'm going to put a solid color in there. Let's make that white. And let's make the border, let's just add a border in there. Okay, so you can see here is a graph that we created in literally just a couple minutes. And when you get really good at this, you can do it very, very quickly. But your client wants to list at $500,000, okay? Nothing has sold in this, in this uh, square footage and bed bath range in Land Park really over the past year, okay? Well over one year. And there's really only one sale in the past several years at that price level. And so unless there's a real reason for your property being able to generate interest up here, it seems like the rest of the market is speaking, okay? The, the bottom of the market looks to be about 300 besides this outlier here. And then the top looks like it's trying to get to uh, around 400, okay? And so keep that in mind. Now, the last thing we need to do, we need to get this graph uh, we need to save it. Now, this is what bugs me about Excel, and if you know a way to do this better, great, let me know. But um, I'm going to right-click on this one, and I want to push Copy. Now, there's no option to, to quickly save this file as a JPEG image, okay? Because you could save this file, and you can paste it in a Word document, you can post it on your blog, you could do whatever you want with it, share it on Facebook. So I went to Copy, and I'm going to minimize all my screens. Okay, and get to my desktop, and this is a little clunky. Here I have a picture on my desktop. Uh, my kids exploring lava tubes a few months ago. And what I did, I opened this up in Microsoft Paint, and I'm gonna push Control V. Okay, that's a shortcut to copy the file that, that um, or to paste the file that I just copied, okay? This is clunky, but here I'm gonna select a rectangular selection because now I have this file here, okay, and I'm going to select this file that I want, uh, click Crop, and here we go. Here I have this image, and now I can save it um, however I want, okay? But this can tell an amazing story, and if you are an agent, I highly recommend you beginning to get comfortable making images like this. When you get good, you can crank them out so fast, and it helps you to be um, a visual expert and to really show the market, and it might help you to uh, assist a client to not overprice their property in a market that right now is very price sensitive. Okay, hey, so I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Again, that's Ryan at sacramentoappraisalblog.com. Thank you.